The utility people gain from standing natural forests are often ignored in favor of timber harvests, or for converting the land to farming or other development. And even selective cutting can transform a forest into all young trees, which don't give the same benefit. So what can policymakers do to slow the pace of forest loss and degradation? One of the most important steps when talking about policy like this is to make sure it's clear whose forest it is, who owns the property rights over the resource. This maybe isn't an issue in some countries where land ownership is established, well in forests and there aren't overlapping titles or claims. In other places like the Amazon rainforest, these rights are less clear. The places with lots of forest left are often poorly mapped and not monitored well by forest officials, and some areas are inhabited by indigenous people who haven't been given formal title to their ancestral land, and without secure land land rights, they are vulnerable to encroachment from loggers because they don't have legal basis to keep them out. If the people who have access to or control over a forest don't have any assurance or security that they can use it and others can't, this is essentially an open access situation. They may be incentivized to liquidate all the valuable timber, turn it into money, that they can invest somewhere more secure. But even with exclusive rights, you may still not get good forest management. For one, trees grow slowly. From a financial perspective, trees have to grow in value faster than an interest rate for a business to want to leave them growing, but as they start to get mature, their physical growth slows down and sometimes falls below the interest rate when they're still young, so they get harvested young, and in the end you get a forest of young skinny trees with frequent visits from logging crews. Secondly, a lot of the ecosystem services besides timber, like carbon sequestration or flood control, they are public goods that everybody gets for free, and the owners gain little by providing them. Or with other goods, things like latex, exotic essential oils like copaiba or brazil nuts, they aren't profitable enough for the timber business owner to spend time on them. So if a logging company has a vast timber concession, they spend their effort and attention on the stuff that gives them the most profit, the stuff that their company is set up to work with, the wood. Creating a Brazil nut division or whatever else isn't something they're interested in. Finally, timber owners may have control of the wood, but may not have the rights to the carbon, nuts, fruit, and other stuff, so they don't take it into account when managing the timber. If policymakers want to do something to avoid forest loss and degradation, they can use economic incentives, or if they can just try to instate obligations obligatory rules. So, some incentives they can try or have tried. In several countries, including Ecuador, Bolivia, Colombia, and Mexico, the governments just straight up pay forest owners to not cut the forests. The idea is that if the forest provides public goods, then everybody pays for it. Similar to that, government development banks can foster sustainable forestry by offering cheap credit in return for good practices. Or, like in the US, conservation easements can give forest owners an infusion of cash or tax breaks in return for going beyond the legal requirements for ecological care. Typically, both the value of the land and the timber are assessed when calculating property taxes. But if the cost of carrying timber is high, then the owner is incentivized to cut the trees relatively sooner. In California, the government lets forest owners zone the land for forestry in timberland production zones, which gives them lower property taxes, lengthening the harvest age. But sometimes money isn't the problem, but rather a lack of information. And then offering free technical assistance on how to minimize logging damage and promote forest health can be the keys. A non governmental solution is the certification of forest products as sustainable, which helps conscientious producers corner certain markets, although it hasn't translated into a noticeable price premium. To increase the prospects of non-timber forest products, organizations can try to help open a route for exotic products from remote forests to distant markets. For example, promoting once unknown but now popular products from the Amazon, like marketing acai in other places. Or similarly, create markets for carbon credits. Some party wants to emit carbon, so they pay forest owners to offset this by storing the same amount in trees. Beside incentives, or along with incentives, a government can just instate mandatory rules, like restrictions on clear-cutting big areas, or restrictions on cutting near streams to prevent erosion, or restricting logging in or near endangered species habitat. They can require a certain amount of forested area that has to be maintained on each property. For example, the rule is 80% in the Brazilian Amazon. Also, these rights can be made tradable, so that if one owner is under the limit, another can protect extra forests and sell the credits to the first person. Just like in a cap-and-trade system. An area can be declared a public preserve with strict rules requiring the whole forest be untouched, or requirements that harvesters must reforest after harvest. Some of these rules, like leave a buffer strip to protect the water, may be good for the public but will diminish the revenue or create costs for the forest owners. The more a policy increases the costs of the forest owners, the more the owners are incentivized to try to break the rules. So they may have to be accompanied by additional monitoring and additional coercion. How to get people to follow the rules 
rules and make it fair are just as important as the rules themselves. There are a lot of other ideas out there for protecting forests, we've just covered a handful. The rules or strategies that work will always depend on the area and the situation. Anyways, thanks for watching this series, we hope it helped, and you can check out some of our other series here.